Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got a huge news flash for you here on the channel today. And unfortunately, it's a bit of bad news for fans of AMD's APU lineup. Today, July 21st, 2020, AMD did announce the release of its Ryzen 4000 series APUs, which should be cause for celebration, but buried in the press release was this fact. They aren't coming to retail. They are going to be OEM only products. Now, I am going to go beyond the press release, beyond the news headlines and dive down deep to tell you why AMD was forced to make this an OEM only product, despite delivering on the rumors of a 4000 series eight core APU, the 4700G, that's an eight core 16 thread APU with built in Vega graphics. Sounds fantastic. But again, there are four reasons AMD is not bringing this to retail. Number one, AMD has always been a year behind in its release of the APUs. These are the CPUs with built in graphics. Back in 2017, when Ryzen was launched to great fanfare, there were no APUs. Those would come a year later in the form of the 2200G and 2400G. Then a year after that, we got this APU, the Ryzen 5 3400G, as well as the 3200G. I reviewed both of these last year in 2019 and said, you know, frankly, AMD is resting on its laurels. All that Intel has to do is wake up and AMD is going to be in trouble with this APU lineup. They weren't moving the ball forward fast enough. Now, the number two reason this couldn't come to retail is that the marketing has been completely off from the start. They have named these based on which year they were released rather than the performance level and architecture they used. So the Ryzen 2000 series APUs actually used the original 1000 series architecture, but because they were a year late, AMD felt that it had to keep its marketing more consistent with the CPUs that were actually launched at the same time. Similar situation with the 3400G. It was truly not a 3000 series CPU. It did not use Zen 2 architecture. Now with the 4000 series APUs, we are getting Zen 2 architecture, but Zen 3 is right around the corner and it's going to be called the new 4000 series. Again, it's extremely confusing that the APUs didn't use the same architecture as the CPUs with the same series name, 4000, 3000, 3000, 2000, etc. Now, the number three reason that AMD was forced to make the 4000 series an OEM only product was that Intel simply caught up. All right, this was telegraphed a year ago that the 10th gen CPUs would step up their game in terms of multi threading support. And look, in its press release for the 4700G, AMD compares it to the Core i7-9700 with built-in graphics and says it's faster in this discipline and this discipline, blah, blah, blah. The 9700 is essentially discontinued. That's not a current product. It's as if the press release was written six months ago, which it probably was when the 4700G should have hit the market. Of course, today, Intel has its 10th gen Core i7-10700 and it's far superior to the 9700. And I guarantee you, it's superior to the 4700G in everything but graphics. Now you may say, well, the graphics are better on the AMD APU, right? Yeah, they're probably twice as fast because Intel hasn't updated its integrated graphics in about five years. So that's an easy target, but frankly, that doesn't matter that much for this class of product. I don't believe a lot of people are buying these for gaming. I found on the 3400G when I reviewed it that it's built in Vega graphics really wasn't that great. It wasn't going to sell gamers on this product. So here we are now in 2020, 10th gen core CPUs from Intel have caught up and basically beaten AMD in terms of CPU performance per dollar. And that brings me to the number four reason, and that is motherboard support. AMD promised the world in 2017 when they said they'd have five years of support for the AM4 socket. Well, lo and behold, that was a technical accomplishment that even AMD could not achieve. We have found that they've been cutting out support for older CPUs and APUs from the firmware because there simply isn't enough room in the ROM chips for all of that microcode. Well, the strangest move was when they launched the B550 chipset in June without support for the 3400G, which launched just a year before. That was mind-blowingly stupid by AMD, but it was a sign of things to come. And I think the reason, the ultimate reason this had to be OEM only is that there was going to be massive 
consumer confusion about motherboard support. I believe that only B550 and X570 will support the 4700G and other 4000 series APUs, and yet most people who are waiting for that APU probably wanted to use it in a B450 chipset. So the AMD was just going to get so many calls to tech support, so many return processors, it simply wasn't going to be worth it. And that brings me to another point that is more speculation because we'll never really know. So this isn't as much fact-based as all the other four points I made. That's why I keep it separate. Here's my speculation. I think the price was going to be too high. We'll never know because it's going to be buried in an OEM system. We won't know what the actual price of these APs would have been at retail, but I bet the 4700G would have been well over $300. It would have had to compete directly with the Core i7-10700 and it would not have been able to beat that CPU in terms of CPU performance because the 4700G is not quite equal to the 3700X I have here due to a limited cash amount. So ultimately, AMD was in a bind. It had a great APU, but it was costly to manufacture. It required a lot of changes to the die to fit all of that in. And I think the price was simply going to be too high to compete with what Intel has delivered this year. And frankly, that wasn't much of a surprise. AMD should have known it was coming. Even the pricing, since Intel is completely consistent with its pricing from year to year, it always slots in at the same price points. But AMD came out with this 4700G and it's just too late. And so my speculation, again, since we have no facts on pricing, is that the pricing would have simply been way too high to justify trying to get it to market. You know, you would have been limiting the number of people who could buy it because of the price, and then the people who did buy it would come back at you with product returns and complaints and confusion because it didn't work on their B450 motherboards. So in the end, I'm really disappointed. I actually have an ultra small form factor case on the way for review. I was entirely focused on the 4000 series APUs for this case. I thought it would be the perfect showcase. Instead, I'm going to be using Intel in that review because I don't have a great APU to showcase. Yes, I do have this 3400G. No, I don't think this is a great product anymore. Okay, if you're buying in the $150 price range, you've got the Core i5-10400. It's, it's a much better product, frankly, than the 3400G and it only costs a little bit more. It has built-in graphics. Yes, they're slower than AMD's built-in graphics, but frankly, like I said, I don't think that matters in this market. I think CPU performance is a lot more important. So I'm really disappointed as a small form factor and home office PC enthusiast. I was ready to be recommending that 4700G to a lot of folks and now I can't. If you do want it, you will be able to turn to HP, to Acer, Lenovo and Dell. They will have the 4700G. You know, I assume those systems will be pretty expensive uh, because I think that this APU is pretty expensive, but we, I, we won't know what the prices are until they hit the market. I think they're coming in August according to the press release. So you can look out for those if you are interested in a pre-built PC using an AMD APU. But for all you folks who are building your own small form factor systems, I'm starting to lean towards Intel. I mean, I didn't think I'd say it, uh, but AMD has just fallen too far behind. So that's the news. Of course, if you have comments or questions, post them down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. If you enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.